today. Uh, we're in the, the Cathedral Loft, Cathedral of St. John the Baptist, with the current rector, Monsignor William O'Neill. Uh, how are you today, Monsignor? I'm fine. Uh, William, you know, it's my name, I said middle low for Oliver. Oh, for Oliver. And somehow when I came to the United States, the Oliver got dropped. When I go back to Ireland, Oliver is always used. Some people even call me just Oliver. Just Oliver. Generally, Willie Oliver or Billy Oliver, but the Oliver is always part of the name. And is Oliver and a family name? Oliver comes from St. Oliver Plunkett. He was a martyr, an Irish martyr. And uh, he was Archbishop of our man. He got, he got, he was, in the penal days, he was saying mass when religion was outlawed. He was captured. In those days, the priest's head was worth five pounds, which is the price of a head of a wolf. And Oliver Plunker was captured saying mass. He was taken to London, Tyburn. He was hanged, drawn, and quartered. So I'm named after him. Uh, he was almost hanged, drawn, and quartered here a few times. But anyhow, my name is William Oliver O'Neill. And uh, I wanted on my headstone, Oliver. Oliver. Right. I'll, I'll remember that. You remember that, Mikey. Call me uh, Billy Oliver. Hey, Billy Oliver. Um, Billy Oliver. When, yeah. When, when and, did and I answered that like a chicken going for feed. <laughs> Anyhow. <laughs> um, when, when did you come to the States? I came in 1967. Uh, August the 25th, 1967. And um, how many parishes were you in oh, prior in to coming to the cathedral? Oh, I'll tell you, let me think fast. Uh, I was in New Orleans, you know, for six months. Bishop Fry sent the Irish guys to New Orleans for orientation. So I always considered New Orleans my first home. I've got sentiment attachments in New Orleans. So after New Orleans, I was St. Mary's on the Hill, Augusta, Magdalene Conception Augusta, which later on amalgamated with downtown Holy Trinity, now Holy Trinity, uh, and Sacred Heart. It was then St. Patrick. So Magdalene Conception was two. Holy Trinity was three, uh, Holy Family, Columbus four, Blessed Sacrament five, Cathedral is number six. And how long have you been at the Cathedral as rector? I'll be here 17 years on the 26th of August. And what did you think um, when you were asked to come be rector? Oh, I thought Bishop Bowen was pulling my leg first. Uh, he took me out to lunch and he never said a word about anything. We eat lunch and he paid the bill and we got up to leave and he says, how would you like a change of address? And I was only eight years of Blessed Sacrament. I have trouble moving from one city to another, you know, getting used to people. So I didn't like the idea of having to now move on again. So I said, what's the address? And he said, 222 East Harris Street. Now I said, Bishop Ola, you're joking. I'm not the cathedral type. You know, uh, cathedral rectors are, I would say, a little bit more proper than I am. I have my own way of doing things. But anyhow, he, I asked him why cathedral, and he indicated that um, there would be a major restoration task ahead. And I love this kind of work, working on old buildings. I worked in Holy Family in Columbus before I came to Savannah. <coughs> so he gave me two days to think about it. <clears throat> and I thought, I came down and looked around the place and says, yep, it is falling apart. I think I will enjoy putting this place back together. And the rest is history. Right, and, and how long did that um, um, renovation take? Oh, renovation, well, you have to remember about 1997, we started the process of doing a study on the thing and how we'd raise the money. So we put it holding in motion for a diocesan fund drive. That was 97 and 98. So 1999, on the first weekend in July, we began the work. I remember it very well, right after the 4th of July, 1999. And we moved in here. We actually moved into the basement by the following Ash Wednesday of 2000. And we were in... Uh, <coughs> Over a decade to get ill by, I believe, November 29, 2000. That's when the restoration was complete. So about 18 months it took. That's pretty good. We'd mass over across the way in the in Notre Dame Academy at that time. But I don't know how we all fit in there back then. But, you know, part of the thing is, when I first came here, we had only 400 families. And now we've 1,200, just over 1,200. So, uh, <coughs> so maybe it was easy fit was all that time over in the um, in the little cafeteria. But we were wall to wall over at that time. I remember very well. And was, was what, what do you attribute the growth in families to? 
Broughton families, I don't know, uh, I wouldn't like to say it's my charm, but uh, uh, <laughs> I have no idea, Mike, what it is, uh, what it is. Uh, people come here from everywhere. I think people are drawn to this beautiful building. We get a lot of visitors, and we have people coming to this church, uh, members, who are not really local. They come in here from Statesboro, from Bluffton, from uh, Ellabel, or Rincon, uh, different faraway places that they actually are drawn to this place. I don't know what it is, you know. Uh, but you know, we get a lot of people here, and uh, another interesting thing about people is we people tell you about confections being declining. We don't have that situation here. We have long lines for confession here twice every Saturday. Uh, 11 to 11.45 and 4.15 to 5. And we get lots of people here for confession. And a lot of them, of course, are visitors, tourists, who are in the church during confessions. So we get a lot of people in like that. But I don't know why the increase in the membership. Uh, because part of it, too, is due to the fact that the, the population of Savannah in itself, so I don't know, is increasing. A lot of people are retiring down here to Savannah, and I think the cathedral attracts them. So I know that a lot of our people that we get here are people who have moved here from out of state. So that's another factor in the, in the equation, I think. You know? And um, what... As rector, do you recall the first time you celebrated Mass here? You, what, what was? I do, really, because uh, the, the size of the church. I was used to bless the sacrament after eight years, which uh, was a smaller church with the lowest ceiling. And when I came out here to this pulpit, the old pulpit, and look at the vast expanse of people, you know, uh, I remember very well, and I was conscious of the fact that the acoustics here uh, you had to talk slowly to be understood, and we had a horrible sound system back at that time. I think we've gone through many sound systems over the years here, but the one we have now is not the one we had at the time of the Restoration, or at the, at the beginning, but it was, this came at the Restoration. But uh, And again, not knowing people is something else when you come to a parish the first time. People don't know you, you don't know them. Now, a few people I knew uh, as acquaintances while I was at Blessed Sacrament. So the transition from Blessed Sacrament to here was not as bad as my transition from Columbus to Savannah or from Augusta to Columbus. That's awful. It's awful. You're a stranger. You're homesick. You know nobody. And you've got all those eyes looking up at you and they're trying to figure you out and you're trying to figure them out. It's not easy, but when I was in Augusta, I moved three times. St. Mary's to Immaculate Conception, Immaculate Conception, Margamid downtown, Holy Trinity. Uh, so that wasn't a bad move there. But moving to Columbus was difficult for me. And moving to Savannah was worse. And now I'm glad that I'm retiring. At least I can stay here and be with the people I have grown to know and to love. And I hope to die here and be buried here. And that'll be it. <laughs> No more moving from it. Too old for that now, Michael. Too old yeah. For that. Now, um, as you've been here 17 years and, and you've seen through renovations, yeah. are there nooks, crannies, pieces, parts of this cathedral, Michael, that hold a special? I could address? give you a two-day tour mm -hmm. to see every nook and cranny in this place. I've been to every one of them, and about two months ago, I was up in the attic here which is difficult to get up to. I'm not able anymore, but I figured it's my last time going up where you go up to change the light bulbs, right up above the ceiling here, the catwalk. But there's all kinds of nooks and crannies, and during the restoration, I wrote little notes, and I left notes in different places so that maybe sometime in the future, somebody will get these notes, and they'll say, that time was Father O'Neill. Father O'Neill was here on this spot today and wrote this note. I hope when you find it, you'll say a prayer for him, because I might be gone to God when they find it. I have notes all over this place, but there's, there's hidden places, and of course, there's places up there by the galleries in the front, which, I, have you ever seen the galleries? Yes. Yeah. That, the average person don't see the galleries. The basement is another interesting place, not the downstairs chapel, but the, uh, the furnace room where the chiller is, right under the altar. 
That's kind of the nerve center of this building. Everything that operates, everything is based down there in that, in that room. Uh, so what I call the boiler room. That's mm -hmm. place, but very few parishioners ever see that place too. But, but there are all kinds of nooks and crannies here and uh, places of interest. Uh, some of them are difficult to access. And if you get trapped in them, you might be there for the night too. I was trapped back to the restoration upstairs one night. When I came over from San Antonio for a meeting, I was curious to know what work was done. I went up there and you go up through the tower and you got to go out on the outside and the door in is like a refrigerator door on the, on the roof. It opens from the outside. And I was, went in and I was inside. No cell phones in those days, but I went inside. The wind slammed the door. And I had to spend the night above here on the catwalk till morning time. And when I woke up in the morning, I woke a lot to the night, but when I, in the morning time I heard the workers downstairs and I yelled through the opening of the light, help! And the worker was here, he ran. He thought God was calling him. <laughs> Took off flying, you know. Yeah. Then they finally came back and I flew him and they looked up and I kept shouting down. They figured, some fool is above in the ceiling, and I was the fool up there. They got me out of there. Oh, Mike, the whole night I had. I had lots of little experiences like that, you know. <laughs> Great. Um, do you have a, a, a particular stained glass window that you like? Well, of course, I'm all strong to St. Patrick there because he's, he's, uh, he's, 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 he's teaching King Leary. Uh, the, about the shamrock. He's the only heard the shamrock, but the symbol of the Trinity. And it's interesting to watch the facial expression of the king looking at St. Patrick as he's telling the story of the shamrock. And I often wonder what's going through the king's mind. Is he saying, Oh, Patrick, you're full of blarney. You, you know, who do you think I am to believe this stuff? And maybe he's really impressed by it. I don't know. But I often wonder, what's in the mind of the king when Patrick is explaining this, this symbol? Sometimes I think, yeah, he's, for, he's believing it. Others are saying, no, he's saying Patrick is just having him on. I don't know. But that's one of my favorite windows, I guess, because I, I often stand and look at that window. You know, uh, but... Uh, but the, uh, the favorite part of the church, I'm always drawn. It's very cozy up there, the Blessed Sacrament Chapel, where the tabernacle is. But the Lord is in the real presence. That's probably the most special part of this church. And also there's an altar there, which at the base was sent from his priest to the great high priest. There's a gift when Bishop uh, Becker sent out appeals to have the cathedral rebuilt after the fire of 1898. And that altar is a memorial to those bishops and priests who contributed to the rebuilding of the cathedral. And that's what the inscription means, from his priest to the great high priest. So uh, that's, that's very much part of the history of this church. And I don't think a lot of people would understand what that inscription stands for, you know? Yeah, so I like Blessed Sacrament Chapel. And oftentimes when I have small weddings in small groups, I usually do the weddings in that little chapel. It's, it's more intimate in there than it is out in the big church, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, it is very special, the, the altar there. And I, another thing is the door of the tabernacle. I saw that door actually being poured, the bronze being poured. I was with Bishop Boland and Walter Murphy when we went over to inspect the work in Italy for the ship here. And we actually saw in the foundry where they were actually pouring the door into the mold. So I actually saw that door in liquid form, in hot molten liquid. Yeah. So that's another appeal after that door too. I, I saw that door when it was actually being formed and made. Yeah. Is there, what, what will you miss? when you retire? What will I miss? Well, I'm going to miss, as bad as it is, this place can drive you nuts at times, keeping it together, worrying about money, paying for what's going on like right now. But there is a challenge, and I'm going to miss facing a new challenge, a challenge. I like a challenge. And uh, when, for instance, when the restoration finished, I had to readjust the living, a kind of, I suppose, a normal life. But uh, I, will miss, I will miss the challenge of 
of keeping this building together. Uh, it is difficult, but it is a challenge and I've enjoyed it. So I'm going to miss that, but I am determined to let go. I always let go. When I leave the parish, it's over. And uh, I'll be in residence here, but I've made up my mind I will not interfere in any way. I look forward to the changes that my successor will make. I know he'll make changes. He has to. We all make changes. But I'm, I'm going to miss coming out and feeling that, well, I'm the top dog, you know? <laughs> I'll be nobody. Uh, it's nice to come out and feel, well, I'm in charge of this place. And uh, the decisions I make are for the good of this place, and uh, I won't be able to make decisions anymore. I'll just maybe offer input when asked, but uh, I'm going to miss that aspect of it. Uh, yeah, I, I'm the boss. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. And then, um, do you see, you know, once you've retired and, and learned how to relax, um, do you see yourself, how, how do you see your ministry in well, retirement? Oh, my ministry is going to be, but a lot of people in the parish who rarely see a priest, you know. I can't get to them. I take communion to certain people on a regular basis, and I, there are a lot of people that would like to have the priest come to see them, and then when they come, they have time to stay with them. So I'm looking forward to going out, visiting the sick and the shut-ins, those, the elderly, uh, those who are handicapped, those who cannot come to church on a regular basis. I will go to them, spend time with them. I can see myself going out sitting in Lafayette Square and just sitting, we are a tourist there. But something I have enjoyed here through the years, I've often gone out and sit here on the steps and you meet people from all over. And when I bless the priest, they come up to you and they ask questions and you get talking to them and you have the most interesting conversations with them. And of course, I tell them stories and things. And I've often sat out there incognito and listened to people talk about the cathedral. And it's kind of interesting just to hear the comments people have to make. And sometimes people, I'd be standing at the door, they'll ask me for a question not knowing that I am director. And uh, when they'll ask a question, they say to me, you know enough about this place, don't you? I say, yeah, I'm the guy that pays the bills here. They kind of look, get surprised. But I think I'll enjoy sitting over in the bench in Lafayette Square in color and meeting people that go over to sit around there because uh, I, um, it's an opportunity. See, a lot of these people, I believe, have never apparently met a Catholic priest in their life. And it's an, it's an experience for them. And it's an experience for me to meet somebody who has never met a priest and to let them see that, well, the, the Catholic priesthood is that we're, 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 we're normal people. They can talk to us, you know, and it might be a moment of grace for them too. And you often, out here, I've met people who have been in church in years, and just the fact they can talk to me and they tell me they've been to church in a long time, and I say, when you go home, why don't you call your priest? See, there's a lot of opportunities for ministry like that. And I want her to be rushing back to my desk because I've got deadlines and this and that. I'll be as free as a bird. And I can, I think, I can have an active ministry uh, in that regard. I've always wanted to do that, and now is my chance. So while I'm still healthy enough, I'm uh, still healthy enough to continue as rector, but I cannot handle it all. But I like now for my final years to focus on why I became a priest, and that is to really work with people, people. And then let people tell me what's happening with the building, so it's no longer my problem. And I will enjoy, I hope my successor will keep me up to date on what exactly is happening here. I would like to be included in, in what's happening, to know what's happening. I don't want to be shut out of that, but I will not interfere, but just, just keep me posted. Yeah. I, have, I love this bit. I put, I put a lot of myself into this bit. I think I've given it my best years. I've given good years in Holy Family in Columbus. Uh, that was part of my special parish. I really loved Holy Family in Columbus. It was my first pastorate. Little church, old style church. I loved that little church. But now I came to this. I never thought I'd end up in rector of a cathedral. 